All right, well, this is Ron, and what we've done is we have regrooved this throttle body here, and, and true to form, the new bits are far superior to the old ones. So what we were able to do is get a much uh, in, improved shape on this groove, which will also improve the shape of the waveform as it goes into the engine and increase the, the density of it, which will likewise decrease the density of the fuel at the opening point of the intake valve. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and reinstall this, and as you can see, very very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to first hook up the vacuum line, or hook up the coolant lines. Get them plugged in as quickly as possible so they don't leak everywhere. Put that one on there. And then we'll go ahead and put the clamp on it. Be a little awkward, but simple enough nonetheless. Squeeze it up. Squeeze it. And just. Up. Just squeeze, let's try again, <laughs> just squeeze, and work it up onto the spot where it's supposed to set, and let it go, and we'll do the same thing with the other side, and all together we may have lost a cup of antifreeze, if that much, it's not enough to really be concerned about, we're just going to slide that back on its spot too, then, same thing. No, notice I've got my fingers on the back side of that clamp. What that what that's for is to help me slide it up without it jamming. Um, makes it a whole lot easier. Just like that. See, we wiggle and pull. Okay, that's it. All right. So that's the clamps. Now, you look here. I, I promise you that I'd show you this cable in. You can see the hole where the cable goes into. The cable has to go this way, and then it wraps around like this. Okay, that's it. Let me put this one on here. Bang. So it snaps into place. If it doesn't snap, then you're probably going to have problems with your cruise control. Because it does tend to uh, want to pop off and it may jam and other uncomfortable scenarios. So make sure it snaps into place. Get the bolts here. Don't know where that one goes. Hold. Excuse my sniffles, I do that in the heat. But I was made for the mountains, not for the desert. And what I'm doing, if you may notice, is I'm starting them by hand, making a few turns so that you make sure you don't cross thread it. Because these just go into plastic. They're actually uh, brass like metal retainers that are cast into the plastic. And you don't want to over tighten them, or, or you, you don't want to cross thread them because you break them loose. And the plastic cracks, and then you have to replace the intake manifold. Very simple. Just make sure you can rotate, just turn it two or three times. If you can't, then back it out and start it again. And you just now all four of them have been started. And I'm just going around one at a time to make sure they're all snug as can be by hand. And then I put the ratchet on there. And again, you're, this is just going on the plastic, and it's got um, expandable rubber seal on it. So you don't really need to replace the gasket on this, although they would ding you for that at the dealership. I've done, after 600 of these, I've only had to replace maybe half a dozen gaskets. So maybe one in a hundred you'll have to replace. Uh, one of those was uh, leaking before I took the unit apart, so that one doesn't really count. Uh, actually, about three of them were leaking before I took it apart. But uh, just very lightly, you don't want to put a lot of force on it. Might does not make right when you're working on an engine, so always be sure that you don't, you know, you're not going to over tighten it because you can always tighten it more if it leaks. That's not a big deal, but if you over tighten it, you break something. That is a very big deal. Then in Gadget Man Land, we want everything to go perfectly every single time, which it rarely does. Oh, this one feels like it's kind of not wanting to tighten up right, so we'll just leave that one as it is. Sometimes that happens. As long as it's snug enough, we don't care. All right, so now we've got everything there hooked up. Now we come back over here and we put this little wire retainer. Let me see if we can get a little better light on the subject down here. Okay, you see the clip? It's going to go on the edge of the bolt there. It just slides on, slides off. You put this. Just you want you don't want don't want to squeeze it when you put it on. You want to just push it on until you hear it snap. You hear it? Same thing with this one. Up here on the math sensor. 
and here it clicks. Okay, now everything's hooked up and ready to go back together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall the uh, the air tube, and we're going to start this baby up and see what she does. Oh, well, yeah, there's one other thing we're going to have to do, and that's cap off the PCB. Now, there's there's three systems that allow vapors into your engine that that defeat some or even all of the benefits that you get from the Gadget Man group. Those three are the positive crankcase ventilation, and that is located two points. This one here, which is a passive vacuum that we took off. The other one is back here. This is the dynamic vacuum. As you can see, it goes right into the intake manifold. Now, this, this represents as a vacuum leak. The third is right here, and that is the EGR valve. Now, they're, they're hooked up differently. Some engines, they're internal. You can't even see them, which makes them real tough to work with. What you do is find the metal line coming from the exhaust, and well, let's see if I can give you a little bit of light there. See, see this line is metal right here. Let's see if I can find something to tap with. See, so it's metal because it needs to be because it's carrying exhaust gases that are about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it carries up the exhaust gases here. This valve, according to the amount of vacuum being uh, generated by the engine, will open and close the valve, and the valve sits situated down here, and then it just passes the gases on into the intake manifold. The issue with this is that the valve is below the intake port, so that when the engine vacuum increases, uh, it automatically pulls some gases through, so it presents as a 100% vacuum leak. Um, and we're going to have to get an exemption on CARB to do something about this. If you do it, you can do it on your own, but uh, if I do it, it's, I think it's $5,000 a pop if they catch me. All right. So let me, I'll tell you what, let me just go ahead and do the PCV. I've already loosened the clamp. It's just a little, you know, I don't know if you see that green band on it, but on the other side there's a little thing I depressed and I just popped the hose off. I'm just going to drop it down because it doesn't really do anything. It's got a one-way valve at the other end of this. And what I've done is I've taken a, a, a vinyl cap, a rubber cap, excuse me, and I put a bolt in it so it would prevent the thing from being pulled into the engine. And make guarantee a nice tight seal. So I just take it like this because you can't find vacuum caps. I can't find vacuum caps the right size. So I just take it up there and just push it in the hole as best I can. And, and that's it. Well. Well, on this one I'm going to have to do it just a little bit differently, but it takes only a few seconds. So, what I'm going to do is I had it too deep in there. You can't get a good seal on it. So, I'm just loosening it up to where the bolt, there's more flexibility down here. Allowing it to go deeper into the passage. It's good, actually, because it means it's going to be nice and tight. All right, and that does it. All right, so now, now we're ready to start this up as soon as I tighten up the clamp. So we'll just slide this one thing down there, and uh, what you see now is the complete removal and reinstallation of the throttle body. It, ladies and gentlemen, this is not rocket science. It's it is so simple. Need such a few very easy, very common tools. Uh, most especially a sweat rag. It is life in the desert, and I love it. Not. <laughs> One day I'll get to my mountains, but until then, I'm here and doing my work. So, But anyway, the thing is that you can take these off and have them off. I think it took us like uh, 9 or 10 minutes to do the removal and another 10 minutes to put it back on. Uh, so the next time you think you don't know what you need to know, then, hey, contact somebody. You always come back to Gadget Man Land here on uh, YouTube. Or uh, Give me a call. Shoot me an email. Gadgetman at gadgetmantechnologies.com and I will do my level best to help you no matter what your question is, whether you're a customer or not. So on that note, I'm going to say God bless you all richly and warmly. Smile for a stranger today because you will both be glad you did. Bye-bye.